prayer to say, God, thank you for not allowing us to be ordinary. Can you lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you for not allowing me to be an ordinary person. You have made me supernatural. We are not just extraordinary. We are supernatural. Father, we are saying thank you. So if you don't know why you would thank God this morning, thank you because you are a new creature. The Bible says if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. A creature with God's capacity. A creature with God's ability. Have you taken time to record reports of doctors about your life? Right from when you are small. Or maybe the one you even picked from your parents. The one they told you. You record all the reports. But one by one, you see them fail before you. One by one, you see them, they cannot stand. Right in their presence. What doctors say that this is the way your life is going to take. You begin to live opposite of it. Just because of what Jesus has done for us. Hallelujah. What has people projected about you? Predicted about you? Predicted that you are nobody. You are nothing. Your life will amount to nothing. But you watch your life. Your life has become a miracle. And this is the reason why we are thanking God today. Hallelujah. This is the reason we are thanking God today. Thanking God, reminding God of his faithfulness in our life. I will never forget that day in my family. One early morning, we just wake up and then we, we used to do devotion, but most times it's just me and my husband there. But that day, I was led in my spirit to go and bring my children into the room. So I went outside, even my sisters. And all the in-laws that our house full that time told everybody to come inside. And we were inside the room. And we are praising. God was already manifested. His presence was already manifested in our midst. And then I didn't know that the enemy have already planned to destroy the entire family with thunder. That thunder was very strange. And that same particular day, like four or five streets before us. One that went there and killed one particular family. And this thunder struck. Imagine a thunder that struck the building. Anything that is called electrical appliances in our house, they were all damaged. And in that compound, we have four duplexes in one compound. And we are, my husband is the one that bought the sumo. And the sumo is located far away from where our own house is. Do you know, even the sumo, the thunder trace the sumo. Destroy that sumo. No other building in that place had damages, only our house. Then our glass broke from head to toe. Come and see the badge of this thunder on the wall. Like a big cloud, black. Glasses shattered. Rejo, everything is not working. But no life was touched. No life was touched. And before that time, series of all sorts of dreams a loss of life. Amen? You know, you see, one of the things that will make your life relevant is to continue to remind God how he saved you. Continue to remind people too that God used to save you. You see, these two keys, they are keys to a better life. Because there is one language it's an adage in Igbo land. They said, anyone that cannot appreciate the old will not see the new. If you're a human being, you, are, you do not know how to say thank you. You don't know how to go back. Go back and bring up God's faithfulness in your life to your future. 
and begin to thank him as if it happened today. Because without that yesterday victory, there is no new you today. You must learn to be grateful. If you want anything that you have, or you want this your life to continue to experience continuous advancement, you must learn to say thank you, Lord. You must learn to thank God. I'll be sharing with you this morning four reasons why there are a lot of reasons but these are major reasons why you must thank God. I will explain only one but I'll give you the four. Explain only one or two in this service. Maybe second service I explain the remaining two. And these reasons should be something that should stay inside of you. It's not those preaching that when they ask you, you say you are forgotten. No, because this is this has to do with a daily living. Giving thanks should be a way of life. If your life is going to remain relevant, you must learn to be grateful to God. You know, when you are when you go to school, or you are privileged to go to primary school, secondary school, nursery, university you will not appreciate that some people didn't have that privilege. Like that human being like you, they didn't go to school. Some only went through only secondary school. You will not know. When you have father, mother, they call mommy, daddy, they even complain. Say mommy, daddy, you know, they supply all your needs. Then you now meet people that don't even have mommy. They don't even know what is called mommy. They don't even know what is called daddy. Then you begin to appreciate God for the one you have. But they are complaining about, oh, I did not, I have not married. At my age, I have not married. All my mates have married. And then you locate people who don't even need that marriage. What they need now is their health. Some of them are even married. They are praying, take marriage, take children, take everything. But Lord, just keep my head. It's my head that really matters to me. If you visit like a place like hospital, you get there, you see hopeless situations. And then you will learn to be grateful. A pastor gave a narration of a man who was complaining about not feeding well, about not having a good place to live, complaining so, so many things. And then he now saw a madman a madman that have lost his mind that doesn't even know even if he has everything he does not know I hope you know a madman does not know that he has children he doesn't know if he has money in the bank he doesn't know even when someone who is owing him is standing right in front of him he does not know and then he saw a madman Lifting up hands. Displaying madness. But at the same time, say, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like this man. This man that is very wicked. Who has everything. And cannot be grateful. Lord, I still thank you that I am grateful. A madman is thanking God that he's grateful that he's alive. And then someone who is sad, who is in his right mind, who has everything is complaining of not having everything in full. Can you lift up your hand this morning and say, Father, forgive me for every ingratitude display in my life. Help me from today to, to appreciate every good thing you have done for me. So many things I claim that they are my rights. Are they really my rights? Lord, I'm grateful. Is somebody alive in this place? Oh, I'm talking to dead people. Am I talking to living people? Uh, see if you are living now, lift up your voice and give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give him thanks. Say, Lord, I am thanking you and I am asking for your forgiveness for not being grateful. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Number one reason 
We give thanks. See, you need to know these four things. Know it without looking at both. Like it's, it is like the way you think. You think about it. You know they say, ah, why I should remain grateful to God? Why I should continue to thank God? You like you know it and you do it intentionally. You should know it. Number one is that we owe God thanks. Why? He created us. So, we are indebted to God to give him thanks. And we can see we have Jesus display that expectation in the book of Luke 17. We saw how Ten lepers came crying to Jesus for their cleansing. Crying to Jesus to cleanse them, heal them, so that they can be part of the society. They we are ten. And you know, it is in the character of God to show kindness to all. Hallelujah. You know, some people think that God used to make choice. Or that God rate us or show his kindness to us based on our works. The Bible says all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So every man standing in the presence of God is standing based on grace. Every man is standing based on grace. So no matter how self-righteous you think you are, you were born with Adamic nature. Praise God. Which is one of the reasons Jesus came. Let me digress a little bit. In the old covenant, before you come into the presence of God, and every child of God is expected to come to God's presence at least once a year. And when you are coming, you come with two lambs. Innocent lambs for sacrifice. And the purpose for those lambs, number one, the first lamb is to carry your sin. Hmm? You will confess your sin on one of the lambs. Okay? So, one of the lambs will become your sin bearer. That is, God was trying to demonstrate what Jesus is going to do. Remember the life of children of Israel and God was pure practical about Christ. So, you confess into that lamb or kid that is innocent. And it's assumed that all your sin, as you are doing that, you will carry your hand and put on the head of that animal. And all your sin will be transferred to that animal. And that animal will be released. The priest will release it into a forest. That's how we'll have that's the genesis of wild goats, wild animals, wild domestic animals. Most of the sheep, you can see a white sheep inside forest. These are all uh, in Igbo, they call it Ewa uh, Abara. Uh, I think this one, Abara means spirit. Uh, this goat, na spirit goat. Uh, this uh, sheep, na spirit sheep. This uh, whatever, different animals. And people are not permitted to eat it. Because they, they, they carry sins of people. And they are being driven into wilderness. And the purpose is that they will die there. Because in the wilderness, there is no water. Amen? There is no water in the wilderness. So they will be driven to die there. Then the second kid, or goat, or whatever, will be killed. And the blood will be used to cover your sin. Praise God. Praise God. So Jesus actually came and fulfilled these two. On the cross, he took all our what? Sin. He took all our sin. 
And remember, David told us that the blood of that animal was un, not able to blot out the sin. The blood of that animal can only cover your sin. That's why David will always say, blessed is the man whose sins are what? Covered. Sins are covered. He didn't say whose sins are blotted out. The sin is still there. But he has what? Plaster it with what? Blood. So that God, when he's looking at you in his temple, he is seeing that blood of innocent animal. I hope you're getting it. Now, on the cross, Jesus become, became our sin bearer, which represents what I have just explained to you. But we are told that the blood of the animal cannot blot out. So Jesus needs to do something that is bigger and better than just covering people's blood. He needs to blot out their what? See. So on the same cross, he did not just bear our sin. Remember, bearing sin means facing the punishment. He did not just bear our sin he also, number two stage, he became the nature of the devil. Amen? It was by being the nature of the devil that God left him. God left him. So, when God left him, he turned to become ordinary human being. He was no longer divine. He was no longer supernatural. He was just Human being that is helpless. So, he now warranted him to go to hell. Because his soul, his spirit, has become sin for us. Hallelujah. He's the nature. Remember, in the realm of the spirit, the flesh is not going. The person who is going to meet the maker is who? The spirit. And the spirit is going to meet the maker has become what? The devil. The nature of the devil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Jesus does not segregate. When the ten lepers came, he cleansed ten of them. He now told them, he said, all of you go and do what? Wash yourself in a particular river. And all of them, they were going. But they didn't know. Jesus didn't even wait. God didn't wait. Mercy didn't wait. Grace didn't wait for them to get to the river on their way. Just the spoken word of God that creates healing. Just because Jesus has spoken. He said, go and be cleansed. So on their way as they are going, the word follow them and begin to do what? Cleanse them. When they found out that ah, going to the river is of no use. Their fingers have come out. Everywhere this thing have eaten up. Everything is not complete. They just continued celebrating into their houses. Hey! This is my uncle that followed the society to surprise me from the society. <laughs> Finally, I'm back. I'm going to deal with them. All of them went about their business. One out of ten. You say, wow. This is amazing. No, 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 no. Let me rush back and go and tell Jesus. We did not even get to the river. And I became whole. Let me go and tell Jesus. Thank. Let's read verse 17. Luke 17, 17. Remember, we are talking about giving thanks is what we owe God. Giving thanks is what we owe God. Giving thanks is what we owe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 17, 17. I read. Are you there? Okay, let's read together one to go. And Jesus answering said, We are there, we are there not ten cleansed, 
So Jesus actually knew that they didn't get to the river and they were cleansed. He said, we are there not ten what? Cleansed. But where are the what? Nine. May you not be missing among those that are grateful. I said, may you not be missing among those that are grateful. Showing gratefulness and heart of gratitude is not just what we show to God. It's also what we show to men. If our life is going to appreciate, we must learn to appreciate people that God has strategically used in our life. There are people that are so strategic in our destiny. So strategic. There are people that our life is not completed. Our life is not complete at all until their names are mentioned in our life. Those people, if we don't find time to celebrate them, to appreciate them, to tell people about what God used them to do, it will put a limitation over our life. May you not have limitation over your life. I said, may you not have limitation over your life. I found out in my life that human beings are naturally ungrateful. A lot of people don't know how to appreciate. They are good at criticizing people mentioning about negative things that people have done to them, they never mention about the good things that people have, God have used people to do in their life. And this is the nature of selfishness. This is the nature of flesh. It is the nature of flesh. I trained myself at a particular time. After I become child of God, I told myself, that I will remain grateful to anyone God used to lift me or show me light. I will focus on the positive and take my mind off the negative. Because I've seen people, God used you to elevate them. They turn out and they can spit on your face. Like they spit on your face without mercy. Such people, they don't go above the level they have found themselves. The Bible says, Jesus answered. Remember, Jesus in this place is like a human being. Huh? A human being that show you kindness. Someone that just gave you a happy hand. I was talking to a relative of mine. I said, see, there's something I found out about you. And that's why so many good things might not continue to flow to you. You don't know how to say thank you. You have the mindset of, is my right? And when you have that kind of mindset, I tell you, you won't go far. It will not be long when people discover it. Even the law of nature will begin to take people out of your life. Never you say it's your right. Even if you are married, maybe you are married to a man. This man, take care of you, take care of your children, pay their school fees, feed you, is there for you. <laughs> My dear, you must learn how to say my husband, you are very special. You are amazing. Because there are people that are also husband and they are highly irresponsible. Highly irresponsible. Like very irresponsible. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you want your life to go forward, you must learn to go back. Let me go back and tell the man that helped me. Thank, thank you. Let me go back. Jesus was actually expecting. Let me tell you all the people that God have used to elevate you that are expecting your thank you. 
They are expecting your thank you. Jesus was expecting. Jesus answered and said, we are there not what? Ten. Cleanse. Ten, we are cleansed. Ten, we are cleansed from their diseases. Ten, we are cleansed. When God used people to lift you, you must learn to go back and say, thank you. When God used people to lift you, you must learn to say, Father, it, do you know that when God says, I love you, one of the ways he shows it, he brings people that will be telling you that every day. Huh? So when somebody is telling you, I love you, behind the scene is God telling you, I love you. Who brought the people, your, the person your way? God. I was telling one young boy, I said, come, what I'm doing for you, it's not just me. I actually even know you because of the blood of Jesus. What brought us together is because we have become Christians. If not for Christ, there is no way you would have met me and I wouldn't have met you. You must learn to thank God for bringing you to a place where he has also brought some people to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. In my life, I have people, they are in my diary of no complaint. <laughs> I have people, I have about, now it has increased to five. I have about five people in my life. No, even if they kill my mama today, my papa will not stop being grateful for them. Do you have such people in your life? Or all you remember is how they pinched you, how they didn't do this, but they did like 10 things for you. You can count them. They give you opportunity to see light. And maybe when your success came, they were not able to handle it. You know? To handle situation, to handle poverty, is not the same capacity to handle prosperity. I hope you know that. Huh? Somebody can show you love now when you are poor. But there is a level of greatness you will reach. His love will reduce. Not because he hates your prosperity, but because he lacks the capacity to handle what God is doing in your life. You should pity that person. You should, you should be grateful that this person was available. Have you not seen people who are crying with you, doing everything with you? And some, some of them too are agents of darkness too. They, they are happy when they see you down. When you want to rise, they, they, they begin to frown. Where, where are you going? All of us will belong here. You're not supposed to live here. But you should still thank God that God used them in your painful days to give you succor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me hear your voice now. Verse 18 says, They are not found There are not found that return to give God glory, save this stranger. That is the scripture is trying to highlight for us. That even God's people, they are the ones that are what? Ungrateful. That is among the ten lepers, only one is what? A stranger. He's not a Jew. The other nine, they were all what? Jews. Someone say familiarity. Let me hear your voice. It was familiarity. After her, Jesus will not be my brother. My brother, I even know where they are living. In mama, not be this one where in my mama they go market. Familiarity. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 19 is very, very striking. Verse 19. Is very striking. Let's read it together. One to go. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee. So there are levels of healing, levels of blessings, levels of successes, 
Let every good thing you encounter, there is another level. There is another level. There is another level. There, don't collect one and you run away because there are still other levels. Somebody shout hallelujah. The other nine have missed this wholeness, which means the leper might likely come back to them because they were not deeply healed. They were superficially cleansed. Praise God. Jesus said to him, Arise, go thy way. Jesus also called his thanksgiving faith. Thanksgiving is high level of faith. Come on, somebody is not getting what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of people are looking for faith. They say their faith is small. Oh, how can I grow my faith? When you are grateful, you are operating high level of faith. Hallelujah. And the Bible says with faith, nothing shall be what? Impossible. He said, anyone that believes, anyone, nothing shall be what? Impossible. If you believe, faith. Thy faith. You're coming back to say thank you. It's a demonstration of faith. It's a demonstration of faith. And that kind of faith brings wholeness. I speak into your life today that you are walking out of every ingratitude lifestyle in the mighty name of Jesus. You are going home to recount your blessings. You are going home to remind God of his faithfulness. You are going home to appreciate God for people he positionally, strategically positioned for you. You are going to remain grateful to them. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. People that focus so much on the negative of people will not go very far. So number one reason why you must give thanks is that is what you are what? Oh ye. There's something you owe God. Somebody say, I owe God thanks. One more time. 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 <laughs> I remember when I was still single, maybe a teenager, or early adults. I used to pray a prayer. I said, God, I will not marry a man that cannot afford to pay flat without prayer points. That was my, like, it was a serious prayer for me because I don't check him. I say, a man that cannot be able to pay where he lives. And it's not just anywhere. It should not be one room. I can, any man that, can, that cannot afford two bedroom flats, three bedroom flats, cannot be my husband. Lord, before the person will say, hello, I love you, let him forget me. It was like a prayer point for me. And to be very candid, I meant it. I remember two brothers then in my church, in my family church, that would come around and be talking nonsense. Because to me, they are talking nonsense. I said, bro, hey, hey, before you finish, don't even conclude. Don't finish what you want to say. Because it can never happen. <laughs> like if you see me from today, if I'm coming towards you, just take another direction. Because me and you, you know they're the same church. I know come here to come and come and do I continue from where I find myself. I know I know they for that one. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, one one of the one of the things you have to do for yourself, you must have a standard. Let me tell you, if Christianity does not neglect standard. If you don't have a standard, you fall for everything. 
must have a standard, have a standard of what you eat, have a standard of where you go, have a standard of who can be your friend, have a standard of the kind of people you pull out with, have a standard of where you will live, have a standard. Everything about your life should have some what? And it is personal. It is personal. You are not criticizing anybody who has less because there are people that have bigger ones than you. Am I communicating? Yeah. If you, if you are a single lady here, you must have a standard. It's not any brother that just be smiling with you. Somebody has smiled with me those days, two times, three. I said, why, why is this brother always smiling? I hope it let it not be what I'm thinking. Of. <laughs> because I don't want that kind of smile from this kind of person. But this person is still far away from where I want, I'm expecting him to be. And me, I know even there near. So two of us, we're there far. It cannot work for two of us. <laughs> and truly, one day I told the brother, I said, hey, every time you they see me, they smile. I hope you are not liking me. No. <laughs> you know the kind of like I mean. Uh, let it be normal like. Don't like me for special thing. Because that day, you will no longer be my friend. But you know, at the end of the day, God did not give me a husband that will fought flat. He gave me a husband that will have own houses. And truly, when I married my husband, right, I know he can afford he can afford two places. I know. I know. But we are we, we waited in one room. But I know his financial worth. Amen. You know, you can be in one room, but you can pay for a flat. You can't do it. <laughs> that one is different. <laughs> that one is you not know, be saying you know get. You get that. The only thing is that maybe you are mapping out your plans. Praise God. What I'm saying is that I personally I should be grateful to God. Because what I was thinking was even poverty. Flat is poverty. Flat level alone. A man that can afford only flat. That one is, is still poverty. No, are, are, you, are you getting me? That one is still poverty. That, that where you find yourself is beyond where you actually envision for yourself. God has taken you beyond. Are you, not, are you not expected to be grateful to him? You're expected to be grateful. And neither was I looking for somebody who is over rich. Because all those rich people, they have problems. <laughs> real, all this real, that, that's my mindset that time. I'm telling you, that's my mindset. Rich people have a lot of issues. Nothing they will say, now you be the rich. We make them, they don't get money again. You know those kind of oh, you do this. Yeah, do you know how much this thing is? If you tell me that, I won't get book ganya. How much this one is? What is how much? Because you were not there when it was purchased. You know. So it's not that I was looking for, but I have my own expectation. But God has beaten down beyond my expectation. So I owe him thanks. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you have expectation of your life? Huh? How many of you, what you plan for yourself? Is that if you will move from Enugu to um, all pay worker to, <laughs> you know, you just, just, you just move, you just lift it, you just move small. But God now move you beyond. Come on, jump up your feet and give shout to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you were talking about, oh, Father, bless me with a good husband. You didn't remember that children they there. You all your mind that time was just husband, husband. But now you have children. God has beaten down beyond your what? Expectation. I want you to be on your feet this morning. Number one, thank God for bringing you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank him. Please, love channel, shall we lift up our voice and thank God? Thank him for bringing you out of ignorance. Fear cockroaches fear you at night. We are, when you close your eyes, it's as if the whole world is pressing you. When you are walking, it's as if some people are pushing you. You are running when nobody is pushing you. 
Where you were being tormented by spirits of fear of death. Ah. All the negative reports about your life. You just watch your life. You are living above them. Living above them. Levels that people never imagine that you can ever get to. You see yourself in those levels. And sometimes when you wake up, you're like, ah, wow. God, you see how amazing you are. Look at you. You will lift up your voice now. I say, demon, I bind to you. And you are not afraid. You speak to situations and things will turn around. What, what, what a privilege. What a privilege we have in Christ. You are no longer intimidated by what you see because you know that greater is he that dwells in you than he that is in the world. Thank you for your grace towards me. Thank you for your grace towards these wonderful people. In the midst of bad governance in Nigeria, you are keeping us alive. In the midst of disorderliness, in the midst of hunger, in the midst of famine, you have kept us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are not among the dead. We are not among the dead. We are alive in the land of the living. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At a time, it's out as if, oh, we have come to the end of our life. Somehow, nearly in our life cannot be numbered. Nearly I would have died. Nearly I would have been frustrated. Nearly, nearly, nearly. But Lord, you cause us to escape like a bird out of every trap. Oh, digi, chigi na ya, na azo yezi. Oh, digi, chigi na ya, na azo yezi. Ibo kaka, ibo nye ne mba, yezi, yezi uwe, ahagi, chwe. Imela, o di gonye di kagi. Imela, I want you to lift up your hands and thank God for your life. Thank God for how far the Lord has led you. Be grateful, be grateful. Be grateful, be grateful. Chineke, Antigone, Tikagi, Ezebo. Imela, Antigone, Tikagi. Imela. Getting married to someone who can afford flat. Do you know you can marry someone who can own houses after marrying the person? He can no longer own a broom. Chineke Otigone Tikagi is a home. Otigone Tikagi. Sometimes you study your body. When you wake up sometimes, it's as if something is hooking you. Like seriously, 
Like seriously. Somehow, somehow, after a while, the thing will just disappear. But you will hear that the same experience have taken somebody to hospital. Can you lift up your voice and worship him? If you are married here, I want to I want you to say, God, thank you for my husband and thank you for my wife. Specifically, do that right now. If you have a parents, you have mother, you have father, you have brother, you have sisters. I want you to take your time and thank God for every one of them. If you have children, mention their name and say, Father, thank you. Just lift up your voice and appreciate God. You know, some of us will not get papa, we never get mama, we they like offers. We don't get anybody. And sometimes it's as if, you know, there was a time I begin to like, ah God, why my own mother don't die? My own mama, papa died. Somebody mama did, somebody papa did. What did I do? And God said, don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful for whatever you have. Thank him for whatever you have. It is because of my mercy that you are not even involved in the loss. It is because of your mercy that I, you didn't lose everything. You lost some. You have some. It is the mercy of God. Come on. Maybe you have a lot of reason why you will not thank God this morning. You just look at some negative experiences you have. Come on. Thank you because you have a little of your voice and say thank you, Jesus. the river that the Lord have introduced in love channels. It's a river of glory. You know, I was telling you about that river. In second service, we're going to play the video because I told myself, we'll keep on seeing, watching, looking at this video until we begin to grasp something about what God has said. He said, this river will flow to cities. This river will flow to nations. He said, this river will sort out issues. He said, it is the end of all your complaining. It is the end of all your frustration. I want you to lift up your hands and lift up your hands. Say, Lord, finally, no more pain for me. No more sorrow for me. No more delay for me. All frustration has come to an end. Come and give him praise. Don't go for the river. Experiences. He is God the Holy Ghost. I don't know if not the Holy Spirit. I don't know how this life would have been for us as believers. I don't know. Like we'll just be blowing grammar, nothing will be happening. We'll just be, we'll just be talking, and nothing will be happening. But the Holy Spirit is the beauty of Christianity. The Holy Spirit is the beauty of life. We are going to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank God because He's blessing you. Come on. Amen. Oh, 
over you. Thanking him for every negative experience you've had. Because the Bible says that everything at the end of the day they are working together for your good. What the devil meant for evil, the Lord is going to use it as an instrument. Come on! Yeah. Let's go When I call you the answer, you the Jesus, I go into my world. Give oh, I do you get it? because he is greater than the greatest he is higher than the highest no matter what is your experience and what you are going through and what is befalling you right now the lord you are praising and thanking he is bigger than them all and he will overtake every challenge and he will bring down every mountain by their root lift up your voice and give Chioma, you are the God of Pastor Chioma. Hey, God of the channel, who can be like you, Daddy? You are the God that answers. You the answer. You the answer. You the answer. When I call you, my father, you answer. I said, Thank you, Jesus. The God of Pastor Chioma.